Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. It's time for you to start using the button bar. Okay, the button bar is underneath the program and source monitor. We're not gonna go through every single command because we'd be here for a while, but I wanna show you where all of these are and you can play around with them. Maybe you're already using some of these commands now when you're using either keyboard shortcuts or maybe you're using deep, deep, deep menus to get to things and there's actually a button bar. There's some that I always, and when you reset a workspace, they'll disappear so you have to bring them back, but um, they're very useful. Let, let's dive in. So I've got uh, some clips here with some beautiful dogs and we're gonna work with, with these clips. I mean, come on, look at, look at these dogs. They're so sweet. Okay, so this button here, the button editor, both in the program and source monitor, when you click on that, and there are fewer ones over here in the source monitor, but they're still useful. Let me reset the layout to show you what it is. This is the default amount of buttons that you have. Things like add a marker, and when you mouse over, you'll see the keyboard shortcut. Add a marker, in, out point, go to the in point, go to the out point, left frame, right frame, play, um, space bar, obviously. If you're, if you're pushing this to, to play, the space bar is much faster. Lift and extract. I've got a whole tutorial on how I use extract and the export a frame, you click on here, you can export a frame in many different formats, and that's a default one. And then there's also this comparison view, so whenever you click on this, you'll get the current view here where the playhead is, and then the left side is where this playhead is, so you can move that around, and you can use that to just preview two different parts at the same timeline, but it's really useful for um, matching color from one frame to another, and I got a tutorial for that too. But let's start looking at the other buttons. So click on the plus and we get a bunch. Now, the ones on the top obviously are already there, in and out. Um, these are not there, but you could add them. Clear the in and clear the out. This one is there, go to the in and the out. Go to the next edit point and the previous edit point. These are the equivalent of hitting the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard, uh, so they might be useful. And this one is play video in to out. So if you already have an in and an out and you wanna start to play and then end at the out, um, you need an in and out first when you do that. I don't think I've ever done that in my life. Uh, markers, which is already there. Go to next and go to previous marker, which is a pretty deep keyboard shortcut on Windows. It's control shift M and then uh, Shift M, back and forth. So that might be a little hard to remember. You drop those in, so how do we drop them in? You drag them down here. And you need, you've got two rows, but if you want it on the top row, you can drag that in, drag that beside it. So now, if I have markers, so I'll, I'll add a bunch of markers just by tapping the M key. Now this takes me to previous and next marker, and I don't have to remember those, but if I mouse over, I can see them. All right, that's a useful one. Next frame, next frame, arrow keys left and right. You probably don't need them for that or the play. Play around is shift K. Uh, this is an interesting one. If I wanna see what the edit is before this, shift K will play around to that point and then it will stop at that point. So you might want that one, um, I don't know. I always have this one down here, loop playback, and I'll drop that in. And it does just what you think. If you're at the end of your, your video and you have loop playback, it's gonna jump right back to the beginning and keep going. This is useful if you're looking at an edit. So if I hit it in and an out point and I've got that looped, it will now move around that loop. Okay. And you can clear that by control shift X. I believe it's command shift X on the map, Mac to clear the in and out point. Um, okay, so the next is the insert, overwrite, lift, and extract. Now, 
it's kind of interesting because the insert and overwrite, you can't do in the program monitor. You can only do from the source monitor. Uh, insert inserts and moves everything down like a ripple edit, and then overwrite drops your clip in um, and overwrites that. So if we add, uh, I think I've got all my animals already in the in the timeline. But if we wanted that guy in, let's say right here, um, you'll see there's an insert. And when I click on that, it moves everything down. Overwrite, when I click on it, it overwrites everything. And it depends on what I've got track targeted and source patched over here of where it's going. But you can do the same thing here if you had those same keys. So insert and overwrite could be in the program monitor, but you're actually bringing in media from over there. Now the other ones, lift and extract are really the opposite. Lift and extract, well, let's show you what they are. If I have an in and an out point, and let's drag those down. Uh, let's put them at the beginning here. So watch that edit that I have there, lift, it lifts it out and leaves a hole, extract, it lifts it out and moves everything down. And I use extract all the time on my show. It's actually the um, apostrophe key on a North American keyboard. Okay, so let's keep going. Safe margins, when you add this, I'm gonna reset layout because I'm getting quite a few down there. Reset layout, and then I added this margin. And you can see a margin around here. And typically this is a safe, an action safe, and a title safe margin that are used in broadcasting because there are certain restrictions on how far you can put a title, although those restrictions get broken in broadcast TV all the time, but that's the idea. And this is based on, if you go to the little wrench, all the way down at the bottom, overlay settings, settings. It's based on these settings down here. This action and title safe area is where those are. So you can add in a 4.3 inside an HD. So some people need that. They want to be able to know where an SD frame is. But the cool thing is it's now this button right here. So when you need that, you turn it on. I had this on and broadcast safe areas when I was working on my tickers. I wanted some of them to be within that title safe area. All right, where were we? Uh, the camera, which we've already seen there. You click and you take a camera. The record button, um, multi-camera record. So this is when you're using multi-cam and multi-cam editing. Um, it's just much better to actually go to the multi-cam view, multi-camera. And if this was a multi-cam, it would show up. It's just, it's it, it would have to be a multi-cam. I mean, you wouldn't just turn that on and, and drag that down there. Okay but you could add those in there. And this is revert trim session. So if you've ever been in the middle of a trim and uh, you didn't like it, like if you're in the shift trim, let's drag that down. Shift T, we're in this trim and you've done a bunch of uh, trims to this clip and move this around and move that around. You can revert that trim session back. Okay, uh, I never use it. And you can see it's grayed out now because there is no trim session taking place. Uh, toggle proxies, very useful if you are using proxies. I have several tutorials about using proxies. There's no reason to edit 4K. You can get the same results by editing smaller versions that uh, you, you just do everything normal. You just click on that button when you want to change them from proxies to the original when you're outputting. This is for uh, toggling VR displays. So if you have Equa uh, rectangular or, or any kind of VR format in a sequence and the sequence is set to, to VR, if you go to the sequence settings all the way down to the bottom, your sequence has to be set to that. Um, then you you could 
turn that display on. So um, you can actually edit with that display on. There's actually a Premiere Pro user interface in the VR uh, world. Pretty crazy. This is a useful one. Um, it's turn all effects off, global mute effects. One button, you could drag that to the bar. And if at any time you just wanted to turn every single effect off globally in that timeline, you could do that. Um, rulers, let me just drag that down. And guides, I think these three are useful together. And the snap, I'll click OK. Um, and this is more useful when we're, use, we're in the graphics mode. And we've got something like a rectangle. And you can turn on the rulers. You can see where things are. Turn on the guides. You can drag in guides. I've got whole tutorial. Whoops. I've got whole tutorials about working with that. And if you snap, where did my snap go to? Oh, maybe I don't have enough room or I didn't drag it down there. Let me get rid of that guy. Oh, there it is. I didn't have enough room. So I exceeded the amount of room. But now with this on, uh, this is going to snap in wherever you drag it and it can snap to other ones. So th this is very useful if you're creating titles and you need things uh, to snap together. All right, we'll turn all of those off. And the comparison mode. And then you've got these spaces in here. So you can drag these in and it will create a space between, if you like, uh, a certain look. So if we reset the layout, you can see Adobe has already put spaces in here between these navigation ones. So there you go. You may not be using the button bar. If you're like me, there's a staple of about three or four that if I do reset my workspace, I'll drag them down there right away because I always want them. Uh, the comparison view, wow, really powerful, very useful. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you have found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once, monthly, any amount you want. We love our wonderful donors and supporters. Lots of you have been uh, supporting us for years here at uh, Video Revealed, and we really do appreciate it. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job sometimes to uh, look under the hood of some parts of Premiere Pro and make sure you're using them in the best way you can.